Good evening, everyone. This is Evangelist Angie B. And I'm excited to be here at the Hope in Christ Book Club Authors virtual event. Um, I just got finished listening to Denise and her explanation of how Hope in Christ, how the book club got started. And I really appreciate that. Because sometimes when you're a part of something and you don't know how it started, you, you really don't know what you're a part of. And so, uh, Denise, I appreciate you for opening us up with prayer and getting us started with the history of the book club. I'm thrilled about virtual events because it, it really means that you can reach people anywhere, anywhere that they can access the internet or even get this video. I'm excited about virtual events uh, and, and virtual opportunities because these are videos that can stay with our families and stay with our children and, and just be there even beyond us. And I think that's the same for our books. Our books tell a wonderful story. Some Christian books tell stories of testimonies and some tell visions and um, prophecies that are given by God. I'm thrilled to say that my books have, have pretty much been a combination of both. Um, my first book is entitled Last Week I Want It to Die, and it details my diagnosis with major depression, and it gave the true story of my third suicide attempt. Now, some people would say, why would you want to share that, and how can that be prophetic? Well... When you write down what God gives you, you never know his reason behind it. You just need to be obedient. And I was. I sat at the computer and I wrote the story. And I've heard back from people over the years that say my story helped them. My story saved them. Or it helped them to understand some of the challenges that people with mental illness can go through. So I always suggest to people, write through your pain. And I think that's how Denise got us started. Hope in Christ Book Club was how she wrote through her pain. And I, I, I appreciate having a kindred spirit in that aspect. My second book is entitled The Evolution of the Queen Bee. Now, that book details how God healed my body and allowed me to lose 200 pounds through gastric bypass surgery. Now, some people say, well, how is that difficult? I, I tell you, <laughs> that was a struggle over three years. But the best part of that struggle was that every month for those three years, I wrote an article for a magazine and it journaled my spiritual growth. It journaled the healing in my body. And along the way, it allowed me to see how God truly held my hand through that entire process. I do believe that when you write a Christian book, um, you may not know it till you get to the end, but Somewhere along the way, God is holding your hand. You can sit there and say, okay, I'm going to write five chapters today. And then the dog will poop on the carpet and the husband will wreck the car. And, <laughs> and dinner stayed in the oven too long and all sorts of distractions will occur. But if you... Always, always remember to let God use you. Those chapters will flow. 
and flow like running water. I, I don't think I've ever had writer's block, but then again, I've never really had an earthly deadline. You know, I, I, I don't know what it's like to be signed to a publisher that has demands. You've got to get five books out this year. You've got to do this, you've got to do that. I, I have the pleasure of being signed to a loving and gracious publisher, and that is Ladero Press. You will find, um, you find Ladero Press at L-A-D-E-R-O-P-R-E-S-S dot com. And with Ladero Press, she's, she's very patient. She uh, allows me to go on this walk with God, and there are no demands. Um, so I, I, I really, I cannot imagine what it would be like. But, you know, God will put demands on you, won't he? He will say, okay, you have a speaking engagement on Sunday. And I know that you're going to talk about this book. And you know the book, and I know the book. And I know that you've been studying and preparing and getting ready for the past two weeks, two, three months. But tonight, I'm going to give you something new, and you're going to deliver that tomorrow. <laughs> so I have to admit, if I'm going to be on a deadline, I, I want to be on the Lord's deadline because he's gracious enough to give us what we need. All right, I think this is my husband Barty calling. Yep, family, this is Barty, my other half. Hello, dear. Hello, hello. We are live on Hope in Christ Book Club with the virtual authors events. And uh, for those of you that don't know, Barty and I have been married for four years, and um, this week. We're temporarily separated. <laughs> Not really. He's at home in Daytona. Not really. Not really. He's at home in Daytona Beach, and I'm with family in Detroit, Michigan. Ugh, this is what I have on this sweater. Oh my goodness! It's 54 degrees today, but uh, <laughs> God sent Barty to me at a time when I truly needed the growth. You know, sometimes as an author, you get a little stuck. You don't know what to write about next. You don't have any more experiences left in you. You've, you've been there, done that, and there's nowhere else to take you. And if you allow God to work in your life, he will definitely do miracles. And uh, one of my miracles is my husband, Barty. Hi, honey. Well, thank you, my love. <laughs> Appreciate the introduction. Hi, everybody. I hope you guys can hear Barty. You say, oh, yeah, Denise said hi, Barty. Yeah, they they saying hi to you, dear. Um, okay. But one of the reasons I'm excited about having Barty in my life, just one of the many reasons, is because we got a chance to write a book together. And the name of the book is, In the Beginning, There Was God, Me, and You. Because before there was me and Barty, there was God, and he was orchestrating our footsteps. So, um, Barty, would you like to tell everybody what it was like writing a book with me? Well, uh, this, uh, this is my first book. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't too excited at first. <laughs> you wasn't excited. <laughs> uh, until I got into it, uh, the book itself tells, you know, explains about our love for each other and God. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, you know, my first experience writing books wasn't really my thing, being, being that I'm not a really good, uh, I don't really read a lot of books. Right. So I was in the book, but I uh, wanted to tell that story. So many people wanted to hear about uh, the love of our life and also love for God. Yes. So it yes. uh, was very interesting. And see, for, for those of you that are looking at writing your first book, I, I want you to be encouraged by Barty because he he claims that he's not a reader because he, you know, he won't sit 
and read a book from beginning to end. But he does read and he does study. And so sometimes readers are not writers and vice versa. So if you're new to writing, don't try to make your writing like something that you read in the past. That that might not work. What what do you think, honey? You think? <laughs> exciting thing about watching Barty's evolution is that when we first started writing this book, yes, I, I did most of the typing and and uh, some of the the structure of uh, this is what this uh, chapter should be about. This is what that chapter should be about. But it was different because I was writing our true love story. So I wrote it from my perspective. Then I would take it to Barty and he would have his own perspective. And at times we would, I would wonder, you know, were we on the same date together? So <laughs> sometimes perspectives help with building an overall picture. Your perspective may be a wall. Someone else's perspective may be a door. And so don't be so rigid when you're allowing God to work through you to to write your Christian book. I I appreciate every contribution that Barty made to our book because now I read it again and I get in I get a chance to fall in love with my husband all over again uh, because I, I remember what he said about this chapter or what he thought about that. So don't always feel like, oh my goodness, I, I got to get this book absolutely right. Um, ask people to help you work with folks and take their thoughts and apply them because their perspective could be completely rewarding. Ain't that right, baby? Yes, uh, it can be. And uh, again, I thank uh, Charlene for you know bringing me on uh, board with this book because you know I'm involved in some way. Yes. Yes. got us through the writing and the editing part of the book. Now, my husband mentioned Charlene. Charlene C. Thomas was our editor and did a wonderful job of, of not only um, getting the commas and the paragraphs together, but to encourage us to go further with the book. 
She thinks it needs to be a romantic comedy, maybe a stage play or something. I had never thought of that. And again, we have more perspectives. Somebody may see a door, you may see a window. We just thought, well, I just thought I was getting the book done. Charlene now has us broadening our, our horizon to, to look at what would it be to take our true love story and, and put it in a different format. Um, you want to connect with people that can help you see your vision in a much broader way than you originally did. And I thank Charlene for not only being our editor, but for creating a series of workshops last year that we that we were able to attend. Um, she brought out the Get This Book Out of Me series of writer's workshops. I tell you what, if you haven't attended a writer's workshop, you're, you're missing out. Because writer's workshops can help you develop a character if you're writing a novel. It can help you take what's in your head and put it on paper. You know, sometimes we don't think like we talk. And sometimes we shouldn't write the way we think. <laughs> so um, always connect with a professional editor. I know Auntie and them have English degrees and, and all these other things, but um, sometimes you, you really need that true professional. And Barty, I appreciate you for bringing that up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you're welcome, my love. <laughs> now, one of the other aspects that I enjoyed by working with my husband uh, in the creation of this book is that we created our audio book together. Now, let me tell you, that was something. That <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't tell them about the part where I want to sleep. Okay, I won't tell them about the part where you were snoring. Through. I, won't, I won't tell them about that. <laughs> Okay, I say went to sleep. You had to tell them I was sorry. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I apologize, dear. I, I won't tell nobody. Y'all, y'all, y'all didn't hear that from me. But um, first, there is a um, there's a beautiful ministry when you create your book into audio. Okay. Uh, my husband says he's not a reader. He's not going to sit and read 15 chapters of a book, but he may listen to it because he loves to listen to CDs. Now, most of the CDs he listens to are, are music CDs, but if I slid an audio book in the car, he'd listen to it during his 45-minute commute. How many people don't have time to sit and read? I think about single parents that, get their kids up in the morning and get them out the door and, and get them back and get dinner and bathe them. And then, you know, they got to read the kid a book before the end of the night. That's a long day. So audiobooks are very important um, to have. I know that some of you are self-published and you've spent a whole lot of money just getting the soft cover out, but you're really missing out on that very special ministry. Think about the pastors that have American Sign Language interpreters that um, reach a, a special part of the congregation. Would that congregation feel included if that ASL interpreter or translator wasn't there to, to bring them the word? So think about people that don't have time to read or don't understand what you wrote the way you wrote it. Think about people that are challenged with their comprehension. If they could hear your story, that makes all the difference in the world. And so as a professional audiobook narrator and producer, I love sitting down and reading someone's book and producing it into an audiobook. But it was a little bit of a challenge trying to do the same thing with my husband. <laughs> just, a bit, just, a bit. just a little bit. My husband is a singer and, and he's got a beautiful voice, as you can hear. Um, 
But that doesn't mean he was going to be comfortable sitting down reading word for word verbatim. I mean, he knew the love story, but reading it and recording it the way it was written was a little bit of a challenge. So if you're going to produce your own audiobook, if you're going to narrate your audiobook, we've we've got we've got a couple of suggestions for you. Um, one, figure out what part of the book you're going to narrate. For example, when Barty and I uh, narrated our book, I I read most of the meat of it. He would read the the title of the chapter, or he'd read the scripture. Oh Lord, it was a couple scriptures he read. I just I just had to turn off the microphone and just kiss all over him. He just knew how to deliver a scripture like, oh, goodness. But anyway, um, you want to figure out what part you actually want to deliver. Some writers are not good readers. I mean, narrators. You, you know what I mean? You may know your book because you wrote it. But do you sound very interesting trying to read it to somebody? I mean, some people say, I want to narrate my own audio book because I know where the inflection should go and I know the story I'm telling. But you send them to a kindergarten class to read it and the kindergartners have fallen asleep. So don't feel like you need to do everything. Definitely look into having your book produced into uh, a, an additional format, audio. Spanish, French, American Sign Language. Oh, Lord, I tell you, um, you will reach so many more people with the word of God that he gave you to put in your book. Ain't that right, baby? That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Well, be, uh, yeah, if you can, right. uh, send your book. Let it be uh, expressed in all types of languages. Yes. Yes. I think about, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit older, so I think about old TV show episodes like The Cosby Show, where Theo uh, was determined to have dyslexia. And Cliff and his wife were so excited because it wasn't that Theo was just goofing around and getting bad grades. Theo really had trouble with his comprehension. Okay. So can you imagine somebody like Theo or, or somebody that, that is just having challenges not being able to receive the word of God and understand it and apply it to their life? It is our job as Christian authors to take what God has given us and provide it for the world. Because the word of God is not supposed to just stay in four walls. When the preacher preaches in the sanctuary and then that's it, and then the people don't take it out and share it and apply it, that's just, that's just a shame. So we as authors are not supposed to just have the word of God between the two covers of our book and just say, okay, I, I did there. I, I did it. I done it. I got the books in the, in the trunk of my car. And if somebody asks me about them, you know, I might sell them. That's a shame. God gave you this to share it with others. And it's a shame if you don't do that. Now, I'm not saying everybody need to be selling, selling, selling. But didn't the word say our gifts and talents and make a way for us? So if he gave us the message and we put it in a book and the book is going to sell, I, I don't see there being a problem with selling it. I really don't. I also realize that audiobooks are more affordable to give away, to bless somebody. I know it costs us a little bit of money to print the book, but once you have your audiobook, it's nothing but a digital download. You can email it to somebody. You can bless somebody by giving them that, and then it doesn't cost you money that you have to get back. You see what I'm saying? Now, yeah, good idea, baby. Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> yeah. Why did you call this for? 
Oh my goodness. Thank you, dear. Thank you, thank you. Now, the other thing that I want to encourage every Christian author to do is read your book to somebody. Now, yes, you can prop up your camera in front of you and you can read your book to the camera and have a video. That video can go to the women's conference or the men's conference in another city when you can't be there. Let me tell you about what Barty just did. Okay? I'm going to brag on you a little bit, baby. Is that all right? Okay, but before you do that, uh -oh. let me tell the, uh, everyone that's listening, now, they don't know how to do that. I'm so proud of my wife that she does all of that. Yeah, I do. So, yeah, so if you need someone, you have the information, or she'll leave that with you as we in this show. Yeah, okay, okay. Yep, you can go to the website, thequeenbee.com, D-A-Q-U-E-E-N-B-E-E.com, and all of our services are there. Video production, DVD production, we'll shoot your event, turn into a DVD, um, we'll produce your book to audio, we'll, we'll do all that for you. Um, uh, but just to, to go back to the video version, I, I got to brag on my husband. My husband was asked to speak during a Domestic Violence Awareness Month event, and it was called a Purple Tie event, uh, his story, how domestic violence affect men, domestic violence can affect men. And my husband had a testimony to share. Well, the event took place um, in a city it took place in Orlando. My husband lives in Daytona. It took place on a Friday or in the middle of the week. My husband works in the land, so he couldn't be there. But we sat down and we recorded his testimony. We sent it to the host and they were able to share it with all the attendees. Now, during that testimony, we um, uh, shared information about the book. And I'm pretty sure a couple of people will be securing the book after they realize the heart of this man. But if you can sit down and and read your book or at least excerpts of your book and your testimony and put it on video, if you can't get to the to the event or they they want you and their money ain't right to bring you up, but you can still, you know, uh, keep some integrity about you. You said you're going to be there, so be there. And send them something that will not only share the word of God with the people, but um, will help you sell the books as well. Now, I know a lot of people love these live Facebook opportunities. And like I said earlier, this video can be shared with my children, my children's children. My ch I mean, it, it, it just won't go anywhere. I don't think the Internet going anywhere. And I don't think anybody going to be deleting videos anytime soon. Um, even if 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 there was something that happened and our books weren't able to uh, create a legacy or leave a legacy. We need to capitalize on what the Lord has given us, and that is. Facebook Live, <laughs> it really is. And uh, as a radio show host for over 10 years, I recognize the value of having a global audience through radio. I also realize the value of having a global audience through Facebook Live. Now, yeah, it might be a little inconvenient to, to, to be away from home and and have to get all dressed up for the camera. But it's never inconvenient to share a word from the Lord. It's never. So we never. never. So we want you to think about some of these opportunities to share your book, to share your testimony, and to keep the hope going. I truly appreciated Denise's testimony in the beginning about how she was in such a dark place and uh, started writing. And, and that's how we now have the Hope in Christ book club. Um, 
And now we've got the virtual events that are going to take place all this month. I'm so excited about that. Um, I want you to always take advantage of an opportunity to share your testimony. I appreciate my husband for sharing his domestic violence testimony, but what I'm really excited about is that uh, he now wants to do a new book that tells his story. Um, and so, Bertie, what, I, I know you're not going to tell what the next book is going to be. I know you're not going to give it away. But can you tell everybody why you're excited about sharing the story? Well, I hope uh, my story will encourage some of the uh, youth mm -hmm. to uh, find a place in their heart uh, to stop and think about life itself. Uh, wow. with God being a part of their life wow. and decisions that have to be made. Uh, well, I will say my book deals with uh, my time spent as a juvenile. I will say that much. And uh, I experienced a lot of things as a juvenile that I'm willing to share in my book to see if I can... Uh, it sparks an interest of things that you don't want to do, mm -hmm. that you have to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that's why I'm, I'm right now. I, I like to tell my story. And, and hopefully it helps some. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't help one, mm -hmm. that would be. Mm -hmm. You're right about that, if it would just help one. And how many times do we say that to ourselves and, and to, to others? How many times do we hear the preacher say that? If, if we could just help one, I, I'm i of the, the theory that I want to help one every day. <laughs> every day that I'm, every day I'm breathing, every day I'm awake, every day I, I, I want to help one. Um, and and we need to think about that when it comes to our books as well. Our our book is a is a is a method to help somebody. Now earlier I talked about um, my first book that detailed my major depression, generalized anxiety disorder, and my third suicide attempt. That book helps other people to recognize that they're not alone with their mental illness. During the, the worst aspects of my mental illness, I, I just knew I was alone. I, I knew that, that nobody could understand, nobody could help, and my family would be better off without me. Um, now, that book is available in audiobook version, and there's a video of me on YouTube where I'm sitting and I'm reading the book. Now, some people have said, well, why would you read the whole book on video? I mean, why would anybody want to buy it? Well, everybody's not going to read and somebody needs to get helped. See, I, I think about the task that, that we have as a Christian author. Yes, we need to sell our books. We need to make some money. Yes. But God is going to provide whether we sell the story or we give it away. He's going to provide. Now, every publisher don't want to hear that we may be giving the story away <laughs> because folks got to make money. But I guarantee you, if, if you can reach that one that Barty talked about, if you can reach that one with that story, four, five, six more are going to buy it. So... Always keep that in mind. We we have to um, we have to reach the masses. I appreciate the fact that changing gears a little bit that after you get the first book out, the second book is easier. I mean, I, I don't know how many of you have written multiple books. The second one may be just a little bit easier. Um, you already. 
You think so, honey? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I I do. I do. Um I think the second book is easier if you're working with the same folks. Um the same editor, the same publisher. Um you already know what they're going to be expecting. And that helps a lot. Bertie, I'm going to run and get my charger for my laptop before my battery dies. Can you tell them a, a little bit more about you and you, your process um, with this first book we wrote together? Yes, I'll, I, I, I can do that. And when you come back, I'm you, my battery is about dead. Oh, okay, okay. I don't have to charge it, but I, I'm going to try to hold out so you get back, baby. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, dear, I can hear you. Okay. Um, a little bit about me. Um, again, this is my first book, Collaboration of the Two, and my wife. Uh, she said that uh, I read every now and then. <laughs> yes, that uh, every now and then I'll sit down, I'll read some paper, newspaper, or an article in the uh, a magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I'm getting after this first book was was uh, put out. I'm getting motivated and I'm interested in uh, going and doing this second. Yes. I always wanted to tell my story, but now I'm going to tell it with, uh, I don't know what she said. I even say that uh, I am more to that. You got gusto. <laughs> Yeah. Right. you for calling in, honey. full-time you got a family you got things to do you ain't got time to sit and read much less sit and write a chapter so how do we get it how do we get through that um, especially when God has planted something in your belly and you got to get it out you know uh, do you take a sabbatical just to write do you spend a whole weekend that you could be spending with family just to write yeah you could do all those things <laughs> And you can also grab your phones. I I love my phone. I, I love my phone case because it, it suits my personality. But um, I love these new apps on the phones. Most of us have um, the ability to record a selfie video. Um, and some of our phones have a smart recorder, a recording device where you can just turn it on and talk to it. You can get a whole chapter talked through uh, on your way to work, uh, while you're soaking in the tub, while you're chopping onions. Um, I worked with um, a, an author slash publisher 
about a year ago where uh, she was just so busy um, working, but she was able to record uh, this, the portions that she wanted for her book. Now, we've got software now, uh, talk to type. You know, you can talk to the computer and it will type what you're saying. We've got uh, free software that my friend Shikana Downs taught us about at a workshop recently. You can send the, the audio of what you've recorded and it can be transcribed into the words that you don't have time to sit and, and type. We can sit and talk for an hour and get a couple of chapters done. Um, God gave us these lips to, to speak. So let's let's use them. Let, let's let's use them. I mean, we talk on the phone to somebody for an hour. Well, why not dedicate that hour to get out what God has put in you? OK, so tonight I, I really wanted to to truly kick off the author's virtual book club event by encouraging authors. And I hope that these tips have helped to encourage authors. Um, I also want to encourage the readers that we authors are going to meet. Sometimes when we do book fairs and, and, and speaking engagements, uh, people will come up to us and look at the cover of our book. And once their eye is captured by that cover, you're then able to do two things. Sell them your book by telling them a little bit about the book, the synopsis and, and what you enjoyed about writing the book. But you also get an opportunity to minister to them, share with them a little bit of your testimony and watch how God will um, join the two of you together. Whatever testimony you're sharing, that person is going through it, knows somebody who went through it, or is about to go through it. And because you then took the time to talk to them and minister to, the, to them, they're going to remember you. They're going to buy your book. They're going to follow you online. They're, 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 I don't want it to seem like they're going to stalk you. But how many times have you gone to church and, and visited and that preacher was preaching real good and you went back for more? I think that's what happens with readers. They want to be connected to their authors. I give a lot of credit to author T.M. Brown. She wrote the book entitled Struggles of the Women Folk. And Lord, that, that book was powerful. I, I had the honor of narrating it and producing it for audiobook. And it, I really, really enjoyed it. But now I, I get to do author events with T.M. Brown and, and we get to, to share a, a, a table together at the, at the Deltona Regional Library. And if I get that excited about being with an author, I, I know other readers will get excited about us. So keep that in mind. When that person approaches you, it, it's not just, okay, let me sell them the book. Let me sell them Christ. Let me sell them something that's just a little bit more valuable than the currency they're going to exchange in order to get your book from you. Let's do that. Let's look at other opportunities to reach readers. Yes, everybody's on Facebook. What, what they say, two, two billion people are on Facebook right now. So have a Facebook page that is just about your book. Um, my books are on facebook.com slash last week I wanted to die. My next book is facebook.com slash the evolution of the queen B D A Q U E E N the queen B. And we're on facebook.com with 
in the beginning, there was God, me, and you. So make a Facebook page just for your book. Um, uh, I know we have to do regular posts about our books, so put the flyers in there when you're um, going to be somewhere where somebody can buy the book. Put excerpts of the book, you know, a sentence or two. Make that into a post. Uh, go live on your page and read a little bit about your book or tell the story about how chapter four was just so difficult to get out. Um, use those pages to, to minister. Um, you may come across a scripture that reminds you of your book, why you wrote it and, and what it's about. Um, share that. Always, always use what you have. If you have social media, use it. If you have uh, members of your church, ask if you can share during Bible study night. Um, just use what God has given you. I will never forget my first tour stop. Um, I'm the founder of the tour that NGB presents, and we've got a Facebook page. You can find us, the tour that NGB presents, and we were founded in June of 2011. Uh, we take concerts and workshops and book signings on the road year-round, but my very first speaking engagement with the tour um, I, I was all a flutter, you know, sometimes we, we just ain't ready. And I, I was so close to, to telling the host, I'm sorry, I, I just can't. And, and God's voice came clearly to me and he said, you have everything you need, just read. And I had copies of my book, the first one. So that's what I did. I read it. Oh, my God. So many people. I remember reading the book and looking out into the audience and there were tears. There was squirming and uncomfortable movements. And there was praise. And, and that really made a difference for me. I always feel prepared if I have my book in my hand because that's what God gave me. That's what he gave you. So read it, use it, tweet it, text it. <laughs> Don't just wait for um, the holidays to say, buy my books uh, for holiday sales. Don't, don't just, don't just wait. There's something in your book that's relative to every situation, uh, whether it's a, a, a novel or a true love story. Um, God gave it to you to be able to use it to, to minister to people. And I think that's very, very, very important. Very important. So um, I want to be sure uh, that I give you all our contact information right now. Uh, Barty and I share a website at thequeenbee.com, D-A-Q-U-E-E-N-B-E-E.com. On that website, you will see flyers for events where um, we've been invited to participate. You'll see flyers of our past events so that you see where we've been. I know at one point my website designer was like, well, we can't have all these flyers on there. I said, yeah, but people always want to know where you've been and what our background is and what we've been doing. So just leave it up on the site and then they can see it for themselves. So. <laughs> Yeah, you got to use what God gave you, right? On our website, you'll see our list of services. Uh, yes, we produce audiobooks for authors and publishing companies. Um, I have a, a, a cool little team of uh, narrators, male and female. And so we will uh, read your book, narrate it, set it to background music, and give it back to you in an MP3 and an MP4. Some people like MP4s to, to listen to because those digital downloads are, are easy to listen to. And some production companies want you to send them an MP3 if they're going to make CDs for you or upload to Audible or 
some other SoundCloud listening, you know, um, website. So we'll give you your audiobook in both of those formats. We'll also create three videos for you, three social media promo videos. It's kind of cool for people to see your book cover and see a picture of you and maybe see a couple of excerpts from the book as they're scrolling by on their timelines. It not only lets them know that your book uh, is available in soft cover and uh, ebook, but it lets them hear what the audiobook is going to sound like. So we provide that to you as well uh, under our business umbrella, which is Angie B Productions. So uh, you'll find those lists of services on our website. You'll also see where Barty will be singing next. He does an awesome Motown review show. I never realized how loving Motown songs sounded until I heard Barty sing them. Uh, so his information is, is on the website as well. You'll see a link where you can uh, find all of my books for sale, including the one that I contributed to with M Melanie Bonita. Now, that's a fire pistol right there. If you, you want to know about promoting some books and, and getting a group of 30 women together to get the daily dose of direction for women in business, that's for sale on my website, too. That's, that's a good book. That's, that's a, I think I'm on page 77. That's a good book. Collaborations are wonderful. We didn't get a chance to talk about that, and I know my time is almost up, but if you're working on a book, Collaborate with someone. Yes, I collaborated with Melanie Benita, but my second book actually was my first collaboration. Uh, my sister had had gastric bypass surgery years before I had, and she started writing a monthly article for Large In Charge magazine. And after some time, I would sit in and contribute to her monthly article, and eventually I, I took the whole article over. She, she went off and did other things, and I would write monthly about, like I said before, how God was enlarging my territory, how my faith was growing, how my body was shrinking, and how my health was being restored. That collaboration took three years, and for three years, once a month, those articles that we wrote then became the book. So collaborate with other folks. It, it, I mean, we collaborate in the church house. I mean, we not the choir and the usher and the deacons and the trustees, are we? we? We collaborate to make a ministry experience. So collaborate with somebody to write a book. I would love to write a book with Belinda Marie and Denise Walker. I'm putting it out there. They have no idea. I'm going to let Charlene C. Thomas edit it. I'm going to let Melanie Bonita promote it. I'm going to let um, Lashalanda Jenkins and, and um, Ladero Press publish it. And that's that's just going to be the bomb. I think, <laughs> I think, I think that's going to be the bomb. So um, let's work with somebody else to get their work out. Um, what did they used to call them? Midwives? You had somebody in the labor room with you in labor and delivery helping you to birth that baby. So let's birth some books. Let, let's let's birth a, a book a month. Why not? We've just we've got everything we need. We just need to listen to God. We need to be obedient to his word and we need to act on it. Faith without works. So we have the faith that he's going to give it to us. Now we just need to put the work into place. Um, I, I really, truly, I truly believe that. I, I truly believe that. I don't believe I would have the opportunities that are laying in my lap right now if I had not been obedient to God that very first time and wrote that first book. I think my... My voice would be quiet and my actions would be still. Yeah, we we need to be still and know that he is God, but we also need to be obedient to his word. 
And we can we can do that as a Christian author. As a Christian author, we can do that. Now, uh, before we go, I want to give you um, um, some more of my contact information. I have my Facebook ministry page, The Queen B, Evangelist Angie B. We accept prayer requests. And um, uh, I also list some of the additional services that I provide as an ordained evangelist. Yes, I will do premarital counseling. I will uh, do weddings. Um, and if you want, I, I may ask Barty to sing at your reception. Yes, we will do that. Um, we will schedule book signings with the tour that NGB presents. You can contact us and uh, invite our tour ministry partners to come out and bring our writing workshop, Living, Loving, and Learning from God, along with um, the, the Get This Book Out of Me series. Uh, we, we can definitely help you with that. Um, we also have the Moms in Ministry workshop. That's on Facebook.com, Moms in, the letter N, Ministry. That's where we take what the book of Titus taught us, that the older women are supposed to teach the younger women. And so with the Moms in Ministry, we come in, a couple of us are authors, and we're able to take what God has taught us. Um, whether we birthed our own children or we're teaching the next generation, we're mothering them. And that word needs to get out as well. Um, that, that workshop is a part of the tour. Barty leads the Dads on Duty workshop. And now that he's not on the phone, I can, I can talk about them. They sit up and watch sports in their workshop. No, no. He says that they are actually helping men be better fathers and community leaders and husbands by sharing what they have learned. Um, and we've got a couple of authors that participate in the Dads on Duty workshop. One of our authors is um, the Honorable Judge Grimes, who wrote the book, How to Keep Your, How to Keep Your Child from Going to Jail. He's an apostle and he was judge and he knows. So <laughs> he's a powerful dad in the Dads on Duty Workshop. And uh, it has its own Facebook page, facebook.com slash NGB presents dads on duty. And so that, that's a good one. If your book deals with parenting, motherhood, fatherhood, please go to those pages and, and put information about your book there. Those Facebook groups are there so that we can share information to parents. And if that's what your book deals with, what better way to reach parents, right? We also have a teen workshop called Can You Hear Me? I'm Hurting. And that has its own Facebook page. Kids today are cutting themselves and shooting each other. And Oh, Lord, they in trouble. And so that workshop allows us to bring in one of our um, evangelists in training. Leslie comes in and shares her testimony about being a former cutter and uh, being sexually abused. And she helps us to reach the, the teens and the young adults while we parents reach their parents. And so um, if your book deals with mental illness or any kind of um, instability in a teen or a young adult, go to that Facebook page and post your book information. Uh, we can share these books and those um, um, that information that you post as we bring our workshops to different areas. We also have a, um, a workshop where our Christian rappers are able to share their testimonies. I tell you what, um, that's a whole nother interview right there and, and uh, working with Christian rappers for the, the past few years. Um, they all have powerful ministries within them and some of them may need us to be their scribes to help get those testimonies out. So um, I think I'm going to leave you with that. We don't want to get full off of the word. We don't want to 
sit in church every day, every Sunday, every Wednesday, and just um, digest what the man or woman of God is giving us. We want to be able to release it. We want to be able to evangelize and share it. The same applies with our books. We don't want to do all this research, all this study, all this blood, sweat, and tears to write a book, and then somebody sitting next to us needs some help. How, how are we just going to be selfish? Okay, so who knows somebody that's got a story in them that needs to get out? I know my husband has one, and I don't think he would be ready to get his story out if we hadn't have done this first book together. So help somebody else write a book. Read a book to somebody else. Read your book to somebody else. And let's continue to share um, what Christ has given us through our books, through our, our love, and through our obedience. Okay? All right, I think my time is up. Uh, Denise, I appreciate you for um, uh, getting this this um, uh, this whole month kicked off. I appreciate being first. I think I was first on your blog to write something. Um, you interviewed me on your radio show a couple times. I so sure appreciate that. I think I've got all those links on my website. And um, I, I, I just pray that we are all representing um, the Hope in Christ Book Club the way God gave the vision to you. All right. I'll stay in the chat room for a little bit, answer any questions. You can inbox me. Thank you very much, everybody, and be blessed.